Hello, this is Lino Tadros again. And in this video, we will continue with our creation of a prompt flow in Azure AI Foundry. Uh, but this time, we're going to use the LLM from inside of Langchain itself. Instead of using the LLM component of the nodes, we're going to go directly and do everything inside of Langchain. Let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, folks, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go back to our prompt flow. Let's go ahead and create a brand new one. It could be a standard, it could be a chat flow, whatever you would like. I'm going to create a very simple standard flow right there like we always do. And this one will be called Langchain Flow. Again, you can call it whatever you want. We'll say create, we'll take a few seconds and the flow will be created for me. While we're uh, making some changes, let me go ahead and start the compute session because it takes a couple of minutes in the background. And over here, you will notice I have the input, the joke, the echo, the output. That's the normal thing whenever you create a sample inside of Prompt Flow in Azure AI Foundry. I always go ahead and delete those. So I'm going to go to joke for the LLM. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to also go to the echo and I'm going to delete it as well. Excellent. So the only thing I have is the, uh, is the input and the output. I usually like to change the name from topic to question like we did before. And instead of the output being a joke, I'm going to go ahead and make it output and we'll save and we are in pretty good shape. And you'll notice also that the compute session started and we are in good shape. All right, let's go ahead and click on Python like we did before. And this one we'll call it uh, Lang Chain LLM. You can call it whatever you want again and we'll say add. And again, we know that we are not going to be using, uh, let me remove the remarks from here. The important thing is to leave the prompt flow in port tool. Uh, that is always going to be needed and we're always going to use an add tool like I showed you before in the previous video. We are not going to return a hello. <laughs> no, thank you. Alrighty. And also, like we did before as well, I would like to pass the uh, Azure OpenAI instance itself from the connection. So I'm going to put a comma in here and we'll, we'll call it for instance connection and it's going to be of type Azure Open AI connection. All right, great. Of course, for that to work, I'm going to need to bring in the uh, the from for the package itself to be brought in. So we'll say Control C. I'm going to go right under line number one in there, and we will do this. So now that I've brought in from the prompt flow dot connections, I'm still going to bring in the Azure Open AI connection, which I already have. It's already got created for me when I created the uh, the entire project. And now I'll actually go ahead and get to work. So what do I need to do to make this work? First of all, I need to bring in Langchain OpenAI. And Langchain OpenAI has several um, objects in it. Uh, one for chat OpenAI, one for Azure chat OpenAI, and tons of others really available inside of this package. So let me go ahead and bring in uh, Langchain OpenAI, I would say from and we'll bring it in here, line, line number three. And we're going to say from Langchain underscore OpenAI import Azure Chat OpenAI. Remember, if you only bring Chat OpenAI, that means you'll be bringing in uh, directly OpenAI using the organization, the API key, and everything else. But because I already have Azure OpenAI available in my management center as a connection, I'm going to be piggy banking on that to be able to bring it in. Sounds good? So the million dollar question right now is, do I know that Langchain underscore OpenAI already been uh, one of the packages that Azure AI Foundry loads in Prompt Flow automatically? Well, let's go ahead and take a look and make sure. I'm gonna go to here, the compute session running. We'll click on that. And notice view installed packages. Let's click on this right there. There is tons of different packages installed alphabetically and here you can go through the whole thing. Uh, you can actually go to the next page. This is the first hundred. This is the second hundred. So there are hundreds going on. So the best thing is to filter on the word Lang chain in here and see if it's available. Notice there are only six different packages: Lang chain, Community Core, Pinecone, Quadrant, and Text Splitters. But there is no Lang chain underscore OpenAI. So that tells me something that if whatever I'm going to write code in here, because I'm bringing in Lang chain OpenAI. When I try to validate or run this, I'm going to get an error. It says you do not have the Langchain OpenAI installed in that machine. So how do I actually make sure that this is installed? The easiest way to go about it is to click on the files all the way on the top right there. And you will notice this is the actually the, the representation file-wise of everything inside of this flow. 
And there is a file here called requirements.txt. I click on that. And it's empty. That doesn't mean that there are no packages. There are tons, as you can see. I showed you a few seconds ago, there are over three, 400 different packages installed already. But there is nothing custom in this workflow. So I'm going to come in here, we'll say lang chain underscore open AI. You are more than welcome to come after this and say equal, equal, and put a specific version or equal greater than or whatever you'd like. Right now, as of the recording of this video, we are at 2.14. And 2.17 is coming up really quickly. But if you would like to go something earlier than that, you can. But if I don't put anything in there, the latest stable one will be installed when you run the, uh, the pip install on the requirements.txt as well. All right, so let me go ahead and say save. It's very important that you say save. You can also say save and install all, of, all at once. So you don't have to wait for it. So I'm going to say save and install. So now this is done. You will notice, of course, that the compute session is going to restart. See? by itself because I said installed it has to shut down that machine that got chosen and it will give you here um, an error but it's really pretty much a, a warning telling you that the length chain 0217 is coming up and there might be a conflict there is no conflict we're good so we're going to close this down we'll wait for the compute session to come very important also to spend an extra second just to make sure that the length chain uh, open AI has been installed so if I come in here there it is. You see Langchain OpenAI 0214 as of the recording of this video in here. I think we're in pretty good shape. Let me save all of this. Now I have access when I say from Langchain OpenAI, I do have access to the Azure Chat OpenAI. Like I said before, if you're using just the regular OpenAI with an organization, um, GoID or a key, and an API key and an endpoint, you can use import chat open AI, but I'm using Azure, so it has to be Azure chat open AI to do this. All right, let me go back inside of my function called my Python tool in here. And the first thing I'm gonna create a variable, we'll call it flow, you can call it again, whatever you want. And in here, we, we're gonna run the constructor for the Azure uh, open uh, uh, chat AI. So Azure um, chat open AI. And then we're going to be passing some parameters in here. Okay, the first one we're going to be passing the model. We'll say is the GPT-40. Alrighty. And then we're going to be passing uh, again three different things: the Azure endpoint, the uh, API key, and the API version. These are the three things that have to be passed in here as well. And there is a different way to do it: passing everything all together by using Azure underscore deployment putting the name of the deployment. So it's up to you how you want to do it, but I usually like to do it this way, Azure underscore endpoint equals, and where am I going to get it from? From the parameter being passed to me, the connection, Azure OpenAI connection. So I'm going to say com, com dot, and if I say um, uh, API underscore, there you go, API base, that's the name of it coming in from the Azure OpenAI connection inside of the workflow itself and the management center. I'm going to put a comma and we'll say uh, API underscore key equals. We'll also get it from the connection. So the good news is I don't have to actually type in my real key or something like that because I don't want to share that. This is already in the key vault in my Azure OpenAI connection. I'm just piggybacking on that. Uh, so I don't have to include any secrets or anything like that inside of my Python code in the prompt flow itself. So we'll come in here, we'll say API key, there you go. And the last one, we'll say API version equals, we'll also get it directly from the connection, we'll say connection dot API underscore version. There you go. And this is the most important line, of course, inside of my Python function to create an object that is pointing to the Azure Chat OpenAI. All right, so what do I do? I'm, I'm ready right now to invoke the function with whatever questions I have. So what is the question I'd like to ask? We'll do exactly something simple. Why is the sky blue? Alrighty. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and invoke it with that. We'll say result equal and we'll say flow. That's the object we just got dot invoke. That's the way a length chain works. And then I'm going to be passing the input one, the parameter input one. See? Input one all the way in here would be passed in, and I'm going to take it as is and pass it in. So if input one says, uh, why is the sky blue, that will be passed to the invoke in here as well. And finally, for the output, I'm going to say return, and we'll say result.content. And that's it. 
Uh, this is as simple as it gets. I just wanted to show you how to bring in Langchain. Of course, this can be a lot more complicated. You can do a lot of things actually with Langchain. But as long as you understand how you pass the Azure OpenAI connection, get all the different pieces that you need, and then start establishing the Azure Chat OpenAI and all the different objects inside of uh, of Langchain OpenAI itself to do whatever you want. You want to bring in agents, you want to bring in tools, you want to bring in whatever you want. Um, do something with the, with the caching, you want to do something with um, history. All of the stuff is built into Langchain. Same thing we're going to do with Semantic Kernel as well, but this is the main idea in here out of the box. I'm going to say save all of that. The first thing I want to do is to validate and parse the input because right now it only shows me input one, which is incorrect. Notice I have two things that need to be passed. The input one is a string and the connection of the Azure OpenAI connection. So let's go ahead and parse and, um, and do this. We'll wait here for a second. And I was expecting this error. I get this error a lot in Azure AI Foundry, which is the type error cannot pickle um, class method. And the reason for that is the compute session, even though it said it installed the package, I need to shut it down and bring it back up again. Otherwise, it doesn't like it already. Um, and it will not work any other way. So I'm going to actually say compute here. And we'll say stop the session from running. And we'll say confirm. And we will have to wait a minute for it. And then once it's completely done, I have to restart the entire thing. And then when I say validate and parse input, it will uh, automatically add another input. So it will not only be input one, there will be one called CONN for connection. And I will be able to pick up my open AI connection that got created when I started my own projects in the beginning of this series of videos. All right, so we'll give it here a second uh, to finish up. And when it uh, opens up, I will continue. All right, it stopped. And now I can go back to my start compute session, click on that, wait a couple of minutes until it cuts back and we should be in good shape. All right, let's go ahead and give it a try. We'll say validate and parse the input and hopefully we'll not get it again. Otherwise, we'll have to wait a couple more minutes for the system to be completely reset. So we'll come back and remember, but there is really nothing that you can do. Hopefully by the time you see this video, this bug would have been fixed already, but um, I usually, it usually goes away once I just shut down and, and restart a couple of times, it goes away by itself. But hopefully that bug will be resolved soon so you don't have to deal with that. And indeed, I waited a couple of minutes. I didn't make any changes whatsoever. And when it came back, um, you'll notice here, and I click on the validate and parse input, and it gave me the validation is uh, successful. I did not make any changes whatsoever. The only difference is now, instead of just having an input one, there is another connection in here, and I'll be able to satisfy this. We'll go to the value, and notice it will find out already what is my uh, Azure OpenAI um, deployment. I'm going to click on that. And now I'm going to tell it where to get the string from. So let me go ahead and get it from the inputs.question. So now my graph is actually in the process of being created correctly. The only thing left for me is the output. There is nothing called echo anymore. So I'm going to get it from the Langchain LLM output right there. And there is my graph 100% correct and ready to go. So I have a question. Why is the sky blue? And immediately it will go into the Langchain. The Langchain will automatically use all the different um, Azure endpoints, API key, and API version coming in from our existing connection for Azure OpenAI. And it will create an instance of it. And that is the one that the Langchain will be able to invoke, passing in whatever questions I gave it, which is why is the sky blue, and it will return the content. So let's go ahead and save everything. And on this, with this star in here, it tells me that this is not saved with the latest changes. Let me go ahead and click on save. And then we'll go ahead and run it and see if we can get a decent answer from Langchain this time. All right, we'll wait a couple of seconds for this to come back. Hopefully, all the way at the top, it will be in the green and it will have an output for us. But this time, notice I don't have an LLM here from the prompt flow. I'm using everything in Python and I'm going through automatically my uh, own full controlled uh, length chain inside of there. Yep, and it is green. Let me go ahead and see the output. And the output, the sky appears blue due to blah, 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 blah. And it's all good. And it made the, the, the job as well. Also, I want to remind you, you can always trace it and see how long it took. It took three and a half seconds. And there is the length chain. I can click on it. I can go deeper to find out what happened on the OpenAI chat. Um, what is the amount of time it took with the question and the input and what came back and so on. I can go even in the OpenAI uh, chat itself and see exactly what was passed between the uh, the orchestrator link chain into the LLM automatically from the inside as well. So 
You can actually cut this into multiple steps if you want. One to go get maybe RAG, get the information from a vector store and still use it in Langchain right inside of there using Llama Index. You can use a lot of whatever you want, but the concept will always be the same. You'll be able to get your connection, get all the information about the connection that would establish at the project level, pass it in as a parameter to the function or the tool that you are creating in Python and then do whatever you want. So all the samples that you see out there on Langchain, Forget it is just about Langchain. If you like something out there that you see on YouTube or you see um, on Microsoft Learn or anywhere on the internet that you see this is pretty cool, now you know how to do it. Just bring the code. Just remember that these are the two things that you'll have to do to be able to invoke this from your own Python node and do whatever you want in Promflow as well. Sounds good. I hope this was useful to you. And I owe you one more video to do the same thing, but with semantic kernel to show you how it will be very similar to that as well. Have uh, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, please like and subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.